Hi, this is your host Sapil Bharatiya and today we have with us Daniela Barbosa, General Manager of Blockchain and Identity and current Executive Director of the Hyperledger Foundation at the Linux Foundation. Daniela, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to have to be here. Nice to see you again, Swapu. It is my pleasure to talk to you again. And today we are going to talk about the LF Decentralized Trust. Uh, of course, there is so much to talk about and I don't even know where to start. Should I start with what is a driver? Should I start with what it is? So let's first start with what it is and then we'll talk about what led to the creation of this trust. Sure. So Linux Foundation uh, is launching a new project called LF Decentralized Trust that really builds on the work that our community around the world has been uh, building to uh, over the last eight years, uh, specifically to blockchain and digital identity projects. Um, the topic of decentralized technologies are really core to essentially many systems and many industries around the world now, uh, really building critical infrastructure, for example, with digital currency. Uh, with different supply chain and traceability use cases. Um, and the technologies as a whole have expanded beyond just blockchain, right, or just specifically distributed ledger technologies. So building a greater umbrella where our community can come together and work on all these projects um, under the same governance model um, is really um, going to help the community continue to grow um, and uh, identify new technologies that are going to be driving this decentralization across all industries uh, worldwide. How would you define decentralization and what's the need for this trust at this point? You know, more and more our everyday lives, whether it's interacting with governments or with banks or even with community activities, um, are becoming more and more digital. So when we talk about decentralized technologies and what the decentralized technology systems are, are essentially technologies that enable peer-to-peer -peer interactions uh, without the reliance of a central authority, right? One authority that is making a decision on how uh, these things are executed out. So um, decentralized technologies really encomp encompass a, a lot of different uh, tech. So obviously blockchains and distributed ledgers, uh, things like smart contracts, right? Which are the executable um, uh, parts of, of a lot of these blockchain networks, uh, token standards, you know, how do you interoperate tokens between different systems as well? Um, there's a big push around decentralized physical infrastructure networks, so decentralized file storage, for example. And it's all about, once again, enabling peer-to-peer -peer interactions without that reliance on a central authority. Um, and a lot of these technologies are new and, you know, and really um, maturing in the marketplace. Um, and for us, it's really important to be able to uh, follow the the the, uh, the open governance and open development principles of open source, you know, in the last 30, 40 years that we've been doing open source uh, for technologies, um, specifically around decentralized systems as well. Um, so we're very excited about being a place and a home for these multiple types of projects and communities to come together and really work on um, open source, open governance and open development together here at LF Decentralized Trust. Sometimes there people may confuse these with these two terms, and so I would also like you to explain if there is any difference. What is the difference between decentralized and distributed? Sure. So decentralization, um, as I said, is about not having a central authority to make decisions and to make the, the point. So it's peer to peer uh, decentralization. Distributed um, systems, obviously, you know, distributed systems and from a technology perspective have been out there for a very long time is where you're distributing loads, you're distributing data loads, for example, in different systems as well. In that you can very well have a centralized authority that is making all decisions and making the changes for how these things get distributed throughout the network. Um, when you're talking about decentralization, you really, once again, don't have that central authority. It's peer-to-peer -peer, uh, um, uh, technologies that are uh, interoperating with one another. One more thing is that when we talk about decentralized trust, what does it mean for, you know, there are a lot of hyperscalers, you know, big cloud providers. Does it like pose a threat to them or it is more or less like creating an environment where, you know, once again, as you mentioned, trust, transparency, security, and even they want their users to have these capabilities. 
everything that we're seeing um, in in the space, uh, cloud computing continues to be a very important uh, aspect of it. Um, there is certainly a demand for interoperability between clouds and between applications, which I believe you know brings opportunities to many cloud providers um, in what is called the Web3 space. And if you think about decentralized tech, it's very often described as blockchain or Web3 space. Um, we're seeing you know some of the biggest cloud providers providing services specific to obviously crypto services and Web3 applications, uh, uh, for example, with NFTs or tokenization platforms. So critical um, requirements for decentralized systems, once again, is peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connections, but that does not mean that you know, other you know, computing uh, applications will be uh, not driven by that as well. Um, and you'll see, and you, you'll, you, you, we are already seeing quite often, um, a lot of the big cloud uh, providers um, providing services on top of decentralized technologies, for sure. Sometimes government entities also, they don't want to be logged into one player. They do want to be able to move between uh, different providers. How will this decentralized trust also breed either confidence or some of the requirements that governments may have where they don't want to just rely on one specific vendor? So I think, you know, in government use cases and building out, for example, financial infrastructure like central bank digital currencies, there's a lot of work right now going on globally with central bank digital currencies, love them or hate them. Um, there are, you know, institutions that are, are implementing them. I think close to over 90 percent of of the central banks around the world have projects right now that are creating digital currencies or CBDCs. And, and that's just one example. One of the things we hear from the central banks over and over again is that when they pick technologies, they certainly pick technologies based on what the technology does, and, and but really important to them is selecting open source technologies that are openly governed and openly developed. Um, so with the Linux Foundation, as everybody knows, over the last 30 years is we've been building out these open communities for open development and open governance. And this ties very, very nicely into the decentralized uh, technology implementations that we have. But when a central bank, for example, or other government entities are selecting uh, uh, code uh, and solutions to develop with, um, making sure that it is open and neutrally governed and um, also making sure that there's vendor neutrality in the selections that they make continue to be very, very important. So we, um, at the Hyperledger Foundation, which is you know part now of, of the Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust, um, a lot of these projects have really been core to building out these government implementations already that are using blockchain, that are using digital identity. Um, and one of the things we hear from them all the time is that they understand open source and open government principles and they really want to make sure that the code that they select because essentially you know swap mill they're building infrastructure for us they're building infrastructure for our children and our grandchildren and their grandchildren right these are uh, projects that are going to be in the marketplace for a long time um, and they want to make sure that you know vendor neutrality is something that is addressed um, in these code projects so we're very happy to host these projects and very importantly also work with the with with um, government agencies like central banks we we already have the Central Bank of France, the Bank of England, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, um, and some of the major um, monetary authorities and central banks in our community who are contributing also to the development of these code projects, which is fantastic to see. What kind of involvement are you planning or you already have? What kind of players will be part of this initiative? Yeah, I want to be very clear that LF Decentralized Trust is really an expansion of what we've been working on at the Linux Foundation, uh, specifically under the Hyperledger Foundation and other foundations and projects as well. This is you know, over eight years, close to nine years of work that our community has put together. Um, today, we have over 14 different projects, about 50 different labs that are really addressing uh, multiple use cases around the world. Um, so you know, core technologies, if you want to put them in buckets, right? you have your frameworks, your blockchain, 
blockchains and your distributed ledgers, uh, both you know permission distributed ledgers as well as public permissionless distributed ledgers. A lot of people don't know that, for example, we already have um, one of the Ethereum mainnet execution clients, one of the main execution clients. There's about 15% uh, of the Ethereum mainnet today is running on a project that has sat under the Hyperledger Foundation since 2019 called uh, Hyperledger Besu. So blockchains and distributed ledgers continue to be core to the, the kind of projects that we're bringing to market. Um, but things like smart contracts, right? Expanding the smart contracts that we have within our communities. Um, LF decentralized trust is also going to allow us to work on standards and specifications in the decentralized technology space. So thinking about token standards as these things uh, start being implemented uh, worldwide. Um, the other thing that's really important is a lot of the core of these technologies is cryptography. Right. So thinking about cryptography projects, so, for example, zero knowledge proofs um, and zero knowledge proofs is essentially a crypto, a crypto method for which like one party. So the prover. So let's say you're the prover and the other party which could be me, which is the verifier. We can know a specific a piece of information is real without revealing the information itself. So zero knowledge proofs and a lot of the technology innovation that's happening in that space are going to be really, really important to projects within the LF decentralized trust as well. Um, so we even have we have a new project that uh, got accepted recently around multi-party computation and signatures, right? Crypt cryptography signatures. Um, so a lot of those types of technologies really sit under um, what we call decentralized technologies under decentralized trust as well. When we look at Linux Foundation, uh, you folks, not only, of course, Linux, Kubernetes, you know, Linux Foundation, the hope to some of these uh, biggest, largest projects that I would even say the planet has seen today, you folks have also paved path for open source to become a, a critical piece of enterprise technologies. Uh, people now, they don't look at open source. Hey, it's a free software. We don't want to touch it. Uh, it's not just you help build communities. You also build infrastructure for organizations to quickly come in there. They really don't have to now worry about getting involved with open source because you have great resources there. So when we look at this uh, specific project, how do you see it is complementing the efforts that Linux Foundation has already? Or if I can ask you in a different way that Linux Foundation has solved a lot of software related, code related, culture related, people related problems. Uh, what is the next set of problem that you're seeing is still there, which you are trying to solve with this project? So I think you're 100% right, right? Building on what the Linux Foundation over the last 20 plus years has built, not just in the open source code projects themselves, but how you build a community, right? How you openly govern the code and the community that is working together on these projects. And if you think about decentralized technologies and building decentralized trust, that core of open development and open governance needs to be right, right? You need to make sure that um, people can point to the code, people can point to who's contributing and participating in the code and see very well how can they influence it, right? How can they participate? How can they uh, move forward with you know, the, the, the timeline of these, the development of these technologies? So when you're thinking about decentralized trust, what we've built you know, at the Linux Foundation around code projects is really critical and core to creating trust within the code projects and within the applications of the code projects. So the governance piece of what open source has been doing and what the Linux Foundation has been doing um, is really critical to these decentralized technologies and the applications of them in these global networks that are going to be peer-to-peer without a central government, you know, governance model, right? It is really about open governance. Um, so I think you're 100% right that building on what the LF, the Linux Foundation has built, um, is going to be just be critical to these technologies. And as the technologies expand as well, um, to making sure that it's openly governed um, and openly developed um, within a community like ours. What does it mean for the projects and communities which are only part of the Hyperledger ecosystem? Or if you can talk about, do you see this project 
as further expansion, extension, or evolution of the Hyperledger project? Yeah, it's definitely an expansion. As I said, we built on you know the last eight years of all the great work that our developers, our communities, our members supporting what the Hyperledger Foundation uh, today has in uh, out uh, with you know fourteen different projects. Uh, we have a hundred thousand meetup participants worldwide who participate in different meetups, who come to different uh, uh, developer events. All that that we've built is going to be expanded into the LF Decentralized Trust um, um, uh, project. Um, one of the things that I have been talking quite a bit around, specifically around developer ecosystems, is you know today in what is called the Web3 world, right? So the blockchain Web3 world, it's estimated there's about like 30 to 50,000 Web3 developers. Um, but if you look at open source worldwide, right? Open source developers are something like 20 to 30 million developers worldwide. So by bringing these technologies together, right? What the you know, Linux Foundation does from an open source perspective to the Web3 uh, or decentralized technologies ecosystems, um, we really think that expansion of access to developers that need to understand how to use these technologies it, to implement across all different industries, whether it's financial services or healthcare or supply chain, right? You have Web2 developers essentially moving into the Web3 space, into the de decentralized technology space. And I think that's a, a, an amazing opportunity for our existing Hyperledger community to further expand out into um, this developer ecosystem. Can you also talk about what kind of new opportunities does this decentralized trust present to stakeholders and industry and who would be the ideal candidates to get involved with this trust? So, you know, over the last eight years, we've really had a diverse um, uh, contributions from stakeholders, um, from member companies across all industries, uh, from the financial sector to uh, healthcare to uh, the retails, you know, consumer retails as well. And we think that uh, and what we're seeing for interest for new members and new contributors into these projects, that just continues to expand because using, you know, blockchain, using digital identity uh, projects, um, using these type of technologies um, is no longer just for a specific industry or a specific use case. Um, so we're seeing an expansion and interest very much so um, around governments. Um, and we'll have some announcements of some new governments that are going to be joining as associate members to um, LF Decentralized Trust. Um, also in financial services, you've had banks um, who have been developing uh, using blockchain and blockchain related technologies for many years, and they're now advancing these things into production. There's actual, you know, a lot of production, a lot of real value, right, moving uh, in, um, in through uh, bank to bank, for example, and consumers to banks uh, using these technologies. Um, so I think the stakeholders will continue to be very diverse because decentralized technologies like blockchain um, are general purpose technologies and are used across the board. Um, but the opportunity is really to drive the use case cases um, across uh, specific industries, for example, in financial services. Um, and we're seeing uh, working groups, for example, that have some of the top global companies in the banking industry participating, the central banks that I mentioned before. Um, and we're really seeing a lot of these stakeholders coming to the table, um, not just with, hey, we want to do a press release on this, but hey, we have developers who want to contribute and start participating in the open source community. And that's really uh, where we see uh, you know, growth and opportunity for us as well. Can you talk about what are your short term and long term plans with this uh, trust? So um, one of the things that we're very actively right now doing is recruiting new code projects into LF Decentralized Trust and new communities as well. So we'll have um, some great announcements coming up very soon about um, some layer one, so some public layer one uh, blockchain contributions, uh, which I think will be a great addition to our community. Um, so we're recruiting um, uh, projects and communities that are interested in the mission and charter of LF Decentralized trust to come in and join us um, and start building their communities here with us as well. Daniela, thank you so much for taking time out today to talk about this uh, new uh, trust. Uh, thanks for great insights and I would love to have you folks again on the show as uh, more progress is made in this space. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much.